Bottom line is, if your credit score is below 620, it's in your best interest to wait before purchasing a home. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me once again for some more real estate content. So I mentioned in my last video that this week I was going to upload a video about Oregon down payment assistance programs. If you were here last week, we talked all about general information and basics regarding down payment assistance. So this week I did want to delve into all the different programs available in Oregon, the state that I'm licensed in. However, I realized that that's not necessarily relevant for everybody watching my videos. So what I've decided to do instead is compose a Google document with all of the Oregon down payment assistance programs that I'm aware of. So if you live in Oregon and this is relevant information to you, definitely check that out. I'm going to link that in the description below this video. So today what I really want to talk about is how to know when you're ready to purchase a home. This is probably going to be most applicable for first time home buyers, but really anyone who is thinking about purchasing a home should watch to find out when you might want to think twice before buying a house. So your first indicator that you may not be ready to purchase a home is if you have a poor credit score. Now, yes, I did talk about what loans you can use to finance a home purchase if your credit score is less than ideal. I'll link that video up here. It really is a very helpful one talking about how to afford a home if you've never purchased one before and if your credit score maybe isn't very high. However, I still think that your credit score should be at least 620 or above before you make a home purchase. If you can wait to repair your credit, if you don't have to buy right away, repair your credit first. That is probably the most important advice throughout this whole video that I can give you. Your credit score has a huge impact on whether or not your lender will actually loan you money to purchase a home and it really has an impact on your interest rate. So if your credit score is lower than 620, you might have a higher interest rate or higher monthly payments. And in the long run, you're just gonna end up paying more for your home than if you had a better credit score. So if you just wait a little bit, raise your credit score, you will end up getting much better rates on your mortgage, your monthly payments will be more manageable, and you won't be paying extra money that you don't need to pay. If you have a credit score of 620, you can already begin to look at homes with the plan of financing through an FHA loan. As we discussed in a previous video, FHA loans are a little bit more lenient with their credit score standards. Technically, they only require a credit score of 580, but most lenders will actually require a higher score than that, something between 620 and 640. A credit score of 620 or above can actually make you eligible for a conventional loan as well, but in order to really take advantage of awesome rates with a conventional loan, having a score of 740 or above is even better. If you want to find out more about how to build your credit and raise your credit score, I have a video on that as well and I'll link it up here. The second indicator that you may not be ready to purchase a home is if you don't have a stable monthly income. This will also greatly impact your ability to get a loan. Lenders will be unsure of your ability to make your monthly mortgage payments on time. If you work a W-2 job, you're likely paid bi-weekly, so you know those checks are going to be coming in as long as you keep working. But if you're working as an independent contractor or you have some sort of entrepreneurial role, it can be a little bit more tough to qualify for a loan because you might be having your money come in in bursts at different times rather than on a strict schedule. You don't have to be fully settled in your career or your job and you don't have to be making an insane amount of money, but it's important to be able to show your lender that you have income coming in, that you have money coming in on a semi-regular basis so that you have funds from which to make your monthly mortgage payment. The third indicator that you might not be ready to purchase a home is if you are not prepared for the additional expenses that come with being a homeowner. Spending money on your home doesn't just stop when you purchase it. There are so many other things that you might have to pay for after you start living in your home. It's just like buying a car. Yes, there's that initial purchase when you first buy the car, but you also have to pay for gas, you have to pay for maintenance, you have to pay for oil changes, a whole lot of other things. It's expensive to own a car. And it's just the same with a house. When you purchase a home, some costs that you may need to anticipate are property taxes, HOA dues if you live in a condo or a townhome, homeowner's insurance, roof maintenance, electrical and plumbing maintenance, the installation or maintenance of an HVAC system, lawn care. There are a whole lot of different things that go into owning a home. So make sure that you're in a comfortable enough position financially so that you can handle these costs if or when they arise. The fourth indicator that you may not be ready to purchase a home is if you don't have any savings to cover a down payment or closing costs. Now, of course, your down payment and your closing costs are going to differ based on a whole lot of different factors. They're gonna differ based on what state you live in, and uh, the price of the home that you're purchasing, but you do have to have some money set aside so that you can cover these costs when they come up. Now, yes, there are down payment assistance programs that can help you with making that payment. We talked all about that in last week's video. However, if you don't need to purchase a home right away, if you have time to save up, do that. It's gonna make your offer look so much stronger to the sellers. 
In a competitive market, buyers have a hard time asking sellers for closing costs because sellers know that they can get a better offer from somebody else that isn't asking them to cover those costs. So if you have the funds to cover the closing costs on your own, that's going to make your offer look much stronger to the sellers and much more attractive. As we discussed before, closing costs differ depending on the state that you live in, so make sure you ask your lender for a loan estimate after you submit your application for a loan so that you can kind of get an idea of how much you're going to need to pay. But before you start house hunting, it's really beneficial to start saving up for the down payment and closing costs so that you're not caught off guard when it's time to make those payments. And finally, the fifth indicator that you may not be ready to purchase a home is if you don't have a solid work history. If you've only been working consistently for a short period of time or if you've been job hopping a lot recently, it may be best to work until you've spent a little bit more time in your position so that you have stable work history to be able to show to your lender. This is another important factor that lenders will take into consideration when thinking about how reliable you're going to be in making your monthly mortgage payments. All right, you guys, so there's five signs that you may not be quite ready to purchase a home, but don't worry. All of these things are super easy to work on and get into good shape before you start house hunting. Buying a home is a huge decision. Like I said in my previous video, it's often the most expensive thing that a person will purchase in their whole life. So it's important to be really well prepared so that you're not having to pay more money in the long run. Let me know in the comments if you've already purchased a home and what you did to prepare for that. And if you haven't bought a home yet, let me know what's stopping you. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. All of my contact info is in the description box down below. And if you live in Oregon, I would be more than happy to represent you as your realtor and make sure that you are fully prepared before diving into a home purchase. All right, you guys, it's gonna be it for today. Thank you so much for watching and spending your time with me today. If you found this video helpful or beneficial, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps me out so much. And make sure that you turn on the bell notification so that you get notified every time I upload. If you wanna see more of the behind the scenes and the day-to-day -day of my life as a realtor, estate agent make sure to follow me on instagram which is at arena d and on tiktok which is at arena d pdx realty all right you guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you next week bye